Welcome, welcome, welcome in the words of one of my favorite YouTube creators or my favorite people on earth, John Oliver. Welcome, welcome, welcome to A Man and His Dog. This is Kevin Blaine. I am the man and my dog is Kodiak and he is, I think he's licking his paw somewhere doing something, I don't know. Thank you for joining me. This is episode two of this radio show slash podcast and I hope to get through this. This is actually the second, third take of the discussion that I would like to kind of spark in your brain. Two words, very, very powerful question. And this is something that drives humanity as far as our desires to be loved, as far as our desires to make a lot of money, to have prosperity, to have a magnificent existence for ourselves, our families, our friends. This is the answer to this question is the driving force of all of us when we hop out of bed. Why me? Why should you accept me into your realm of existence? Why should, you know what I mean, I listen to someone who wants to be a fitness influencer? Or why should the people at New York Fashion Week you know, accept a brand new designer or why should the listening public as a whole listen to this man ramble in this small French Airbnb about, you know, the ponderings of life? Why me? This is the answer to this question is what helps us to step out on our feet and experience the rest of y'all when we get out of bed, you know? It's like, why should you support the desires of a content creator such as myself? Or why should the Air Force enlist the skills of a young officer who just got commissioned and wants to be a pilot? Or why should um, anybody follow the fitness regime of someone living in Colorado? Shout out, Kira. Um, happy birthday when you listen to this. I know it was a couple days ago, but happy birthday. Why should, why, why, why should you pay attention to me, this individual right here? And our actions, the actions that we undertake are our way to influence life to help us answer this question, you know? Why should you listen to a man and his dog? Well, my, my dog doesn't really talk. He's a husky. And he's not one of those huskies you see on YouTube that does all the crazy yelling and screaming. He'll talk every once in a while, but for the most part, just like me, he does his own thing. But why me? Over all the other content creators out there, over all the other orators out there, over, you know what I'm saying? Why should you accept what I'm saying as, you know what? I agree with what Kevin is saying. You know, what on my resume qualifies me to be worthy of this position? And that answer can be complicated, you know what I'm saying, as far as the actions that we undertake. You know, for example, tell a little story. When I was a kid, I remember sitting down with my best friend and we were on my porch back in Rialto. Shout out Roe Mob, shout out Inland Empire. And we were trying to figure out what we were going to be when we grow up. You know, the quintessential question, what are you going to do in life? He wanted to be an electrical engineer and he went to college. He graduated and got a job as an electrical engineer. And homie was working on all types of magnificent things. Like, I can't really say what he was working on because, you know, clearances. But um, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I wanted to be the reason why MiGs from Iraq were being shot shot down and the enemies of the United States are exploding in the midst of, you know, fiery battles across the skies. Yeah, I, I saw Top Gun as a kid. I, I was one of those. Um, and I remember one day the family went to Castle Park. Small little amusement park in, I think it's in Ontario or maybe, yeah, Ontario, right by the 60 and the 10. It's like where, not the 60, it's right where the 10 and the 15 meet. Those are freeways in case, you know what I'm saying, y'all don't know what the 10 and the 15 are. And I remember getting on this ride, I think it was called the Cyclone. I was around seven years old, seven, eight years old. And mom was like, you want to be a fire pilot? Okay, let's see if you can take it. 
got on the ride, got banged around, got, you know, thrown this way, thrown that way. When I got off the ride, I decided that the world of computer programming needed <laughs> another programmer. Like, that ride really, really banged me up bad. And um, it's like, it's kind of wild, you know? It's like, we walk out into life, we step out on our dreams, we step out on our own skill sets, and sometimes life says, nah, that ain't it. Or we decide that life says, nah, that ain't it. So we change the source of the why me. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I decided that I didn't want to be a pilot anymore. I had such a bad headache from that ride. I remember, I remember, I remember the pain that I had in my head after I stepped off. And this was a tiny little roller coaster. This was a baby ride. This wasn't Colossus. This wasn't Goliath. You know what I'm saying? This wasn't whatever crazy ride was at Cedar Point or is at Cedar Point. You know, I'm going to go there one of these days because now I love roller coasters, but let's get back to the story. Um, so we switch it up. The source, the why me is still there, but we decide that we want to step into another realm of, hey life, accept, instead of accepting me as a fighter pilot, accept me as a computer programmer, accept me as a fitness person, accept me as a firefighter, you know what I mean? We have this ability to be flexible when it comes to our dreams and our pursuits, and life is just as flexible in, in, in its acceptance of what we view is, you know, our thing. But there's still that little, 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 itty, little, little, itty bitty, like, voice of fear of why me? And I hope that they accept who I am so I can be the ultimate wrestler or the ultimate MMA fighter. You know, it's our actions, like I said, that we undertake every day that we use to influence life to help us answer that question. Like, why would you accept me? And the answer, honestly, is a lot less complex than we make it out to be. The answer is simple. It's because we have the right to exist and pursue what we want to pursue. Now, the circumstances of life, like, um, Will, will this pay for my overhead? Will I be able to eat off this? If I continuously throw my content out into the world, will I be one of those people on Instagram that's driving the McLaren? Or will I be under the freeway as I look at somebody who became that influencer that's driving the McLaren whiz by and the air that, you know, the air that hits me as the car comes by like dries the tears on my face because I'm homeless, you know what I'm saying? Um, but we as people deserve the chance to have a positive answer to that question, why me? And a lot of times we come across other individuals with a different version of their pursuits to the answer to that question that hinder us. Haters, abusers, narcissists, people who look at our actions with such condescension that they think they have the right to comment on why our, our um, pursuit of that answer isn't the right pursuit. People who think we should be working certain jobs versus you know helping us with our dreams and they have the capacity to help us with our dreams, but they just don't want to because they see what we're doing as negative. And I'm not talking particularly to anybody in my own sphere, because as I told you before, when it comes to the pursuits of what I want to do, unless you've done it before, I have no, I don't give you any space to um, allow your criticisms to influence my actions you know what i'm saying everybody has a right to their opinion everybody has a right to what they want to say but we also have the right to ingest it and keep it or we treat it just like our bodies treat food we keep what we need and we literally pass off the rest and flush down the toilet boom it's foul memory gone wipe wash your hands pull your pants back up and then keep moving, you know what I'm saying? Um, my mom used to tell me that the only opinions that really matter 
are those of your investors as in people who literally pay money into the specific pursuit that they paid money into or otherwise there's a wall over there if you have anything negative to say any type of non-constructive criticism if you have destructive criticism go ahead and take the hammer of your comments and go over to that wall over there and swing to your heart's content because if you try it this way if you try to swing your hammer this way it's like a bullet hitting superman's chest just ping, you're not going to get any ground here you know what i mean and this goes for our parents friends spouses significant others cousins it doesn't matter how close somebody thinks they are in the realm of your experience the only time that they actually have the right to influence what you're doing is when you allow them to influence what you're doing and I know that sometimes a lot of the advice we get is actually coming from a position of what they think is help. You know, people are looking at what I'm doing and they're like, Kevin, you're crazy for trying to do something like this when you could be lending your talents to this corporation over here. Or, you know, you instead of being a fighter pilot, you could be the one who designs the software that keeps our fighter pilots safe. So go work for the government when in actuality all i really want to do and what i'm going to do is what i'm doing right now sharing this type of unconventional content with people who are willing to take it in and listen to it i like to be funny i like to write stories i that's why i like to rap that's why i love doing 3d design I like to be creative and I like to leave people with a positive experience after I'm gone. I remember one time I got my wisdom teeth pulled and I was in Germany and my second was uh, this dude named Frank Friedel, shout out 32nd Air Operations Wolfhounds Forever, that's right, salute Ramstein Germany. After you get your wisdom teeth pulled, you're still under the influence of whatever they put in your veins and you can't drive and you need a second. So he was my second and we went to the commissary to pick up like soup and other healing healing uh, implements when it came to this procedure and everything. And I guess we were checking out and I was I kind of remember talking to the person at the, the cashier and everything and he said i was you know flirting and whatnot and i smiled at her and my teeth were all bloody from the operation and other people would have been beyond embarrassed to have you know exposed this little tiny vulnerability to a stranger me as soon as he told me that i responded with well you know what one of my aspirations in life is to always leave somebody with a crazy story they can tell their friends. So I promise you that person who was on the other side of that transaction at the store was like, you will never believe what happened to me today. And I was responsible for that. And I'm cool. I'm cool with that. You know, I like to leave people with a smile. I like to leave people with, you know, some type of positive feelings as we walk away. You know, when we part company. That doesn't always happen. I know there are a lot of people out there that have come across, you know, the nerd godfather and they walk away hating nerds, science, the godfather series, Robert De Niro, Marlon Brando. They, they hate all of it because of the interaction that we had. There are people out there that do not like Kevin and it's fine too, but all of these different considerations are part of my pursuit to influence life to positively help me answer the question why me and like i said the answer is simple because i exist because you exist we have a right to do what we want and you know let me caveat that with you have a right to do what you want as long as it doesn't hurt anybody physically spiritually or financially in a sense of taking advantage of people and getting over on people if you are in full contact sports then you you have a right to hurt people because that's the reason you get paid 
Boxers hurt each other. Football players hurt each other. Hockey players, shout out to hockey players, man. Y'all are a different breed. I mean, fighting is literally built into the sport. And people cheer from the rafters. Shoot, I cheered when I saw this mess going down, which is crazy that we that we um, enjoy and revel in the violence, the voluntary violence inflicted upon others. I think that's kind of crazy, but that's a topic for another discussion, maybe. Um, but I digress in a sense that we can't be afraid to go out and experiment and get people to hop on board with the magnificence of who we are we can't even though you know we're scared due to the influences of strangers the influences of social media of the news of advertising everything out there always tries to shape us and put us in the box of definition according to what is acceptable instead of just flexing our muscles a bit like like um samson did when they tried to you know hold him down with the bonds just you know shrug it off break the bonds of outside definition and walk in your truth and be who you are and understand that uh, i'm just checking the weather and understand that the answer to why me is gonna come with bumps, is gonna come with setbacks, is going to come with those days where you're in the corner crying, in the shower crying, you don't wanna get out of bed, you know what I mean? It's like you really feel depressed after that breakup because you don't think that there will be someone else who will be willing to accept you and the question of why me will just echo in your brain and be unanswered because you know uh this that and the third just like me on that ride i got banged up pretty hard and i was like you know what the why me of being a pilot yeah i don't need that in my life anymore you know what i'm saying who knows i could have been like an ace pilot i could have been one of the the new tuskegee airmen of this generation but instead i decided to walk a different path and that's fine that's perfectly fine but when it comes to you and your why me don't be afraid don't be afraid like and even if you are afraid do it anyway because that's the definition of courage you're not courageous if you never try anything and you never fail that's not what courage is courage is being scared as i don't know what and deciding that i'm gonna do this anyway that's what courage is use you know what i'm saying use those experiences of failure use those experiences of doubt to fuel your journey and pretty soon life will answer your why me with is cool here's this money here's this house here's this spouse here's this girlfriend boyfriend dog hey kodiak how you feeling um like the positive answers to that question will come to you regardless of the negative circumstances that you went through in your pursuit of the answer to that question and i actually got through this i didn't know i was going to be able to do this and speak for about 20 minutes on two little simple words but i got through it so once again once again thank you very much for joining me and i think the more that i do these things my narratives will be coherent also especially since i'm doing this right now by myself um but thank you once again for for joining me and man woman child whoever you are i hope these words resonate with you please hit the comments let me know what you think about everything and once again 36-2903 right hand over the right eyebrow salute